Good evening, everyone. We're going to give it uh, just a quick minute before getting started, and then we will begin this webinar about Forward College. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Martine Gagnon. I work for UES Education. I'm a college counsellor and I am counselling at Charterhouse School in Surrey and at Weatherby Senior School in Central London. Um, I have with me today uh, Christophe Castiglioni, who is the Head of International Student Recruitment with Forward College. Um, He's based in Paris, Lisbon, and Berlin, and he's here to tell you a little bit more about uh, the programs and the school itself. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them into the Q&A and we will uh, get to them in good time. So without further ado, um, I leave the floor to Christophe. Thank you very much, Martin, and a very good uh, evening for everyone who's joining us tonight. My name is Christoph. I'm the head of international at Forward College, and I'll be introducing the institution in a couple of minutes. So I'll just share my screen now, and you'd be able to see the presentation hopefully very soon. Martin, it says that the uh, host has deactivated the screen share for participants, so I'm not able to share. If you just don't mind unlocking this. And I can't hear you, your mic is off. Oh yeah, sorry. You should be able to now. I made you yeah, go. Yeah, it, it's all back. All good. Thank you. And here we go. Can you see my screen now? All right. All right, so I'll start this presentation by showing you a quick video to introduce Forward College. Forward careers have learned for three years in three European cities together with a broadly international student community. First stop, Lisbon, the new capital of cool, welcoming culture, surfing place, and growing startup scene. Second stop, Paris, one of the best student cities in the world. Last stop, Berlin an eco-friendly home in the heart of Europe's most competitive economy. Are you ready to start making an impact? As part of your Bachelor of Business and Leadership, you will work in teams on real-life projects you care for, creating your social and environmental impact project in year one, designing a digital solution in year two, and consulting for international organizations in year three. Our tutors will guide you so that you are able to build up the experience and business skills you need for a fulfilling career. Are you ready to move from passive to active learning? Whether in economics, data science, politics, international relations, or psychology, your academic bachelor designed by world-class institutions will be taught on your campuses only in small groups with an innovative twist to help you excel in the exams. Are you ready to become who you are and grow your personality? Each term, you will explore a new aspect of personal development, stress management, decision-making, connecting to others. A personal coach will support you in your progress. After three intense years, you will be well on your way to become a saver of a meaningful future. For yourself, for the world. Right, so that was a quick introduction video about Forward College. 
So the six programs which we will discover in the next slides um, are designed and the course content is exactly the same as if you were studying at LSE or King's College. The final exams are corrected at LSE or King's College. And at the end, on your degree, you will get a degree from the University of London, which is an umbrella university where King's and LSE belongs. And it will say on the diploma, the stamp of LSC, saying that you've taken the LSC curriculum and studied at Forward College. Then you will ask me, but why should I study uh, at Forward College instead of LSC or King's College? Well, the essence of Forward College, as you have started to see through the video, lies in another type of excellence. And there's a bit of an additional value in studying with us. And this is what we are going to discover through the next slides. But to quickly introduce this, I'll just like to say you that we offer personal development projects, digital learning, and flipped classroom. Let's go and see what that means. These are the six bachelors that we offer at Forward College. BS in BSc, sorry, in data science and business analytics, BSc in economics, BSc in economics and politics, BSc in business and management. BSc in Politics and International Relations, and finally, Bachelor of Science in Psychology by King's College. Forward College idea was born four years ago when our founding members engaged in talks and workshops with 60 experts in the fields of education, companies, business, recruitment, leadership, and they worked on this project of Forward College after coming to a conclusion. The students that were finishing their educations were not ready to adapt to a changing world. The skills that they had gained throughout their studies were missing some elements. And this is when they said, okay, the world is changing fast. There are new economical, political, and environmental changes happening. The world is changing fast and tomorrow's workforce will need to adapt and, and to work along those changes. So the goal of Forward College being funded was to create a university, a place where students will strive in tomorrow's challenges. So we voluntarily limited the number of students per class to 15 students on average. This means that Every teacher will know you. They will know your name, they will know who you are, and they will work very closely to you and assist your learning throughout the different uh, years. Because we have small classes, the teachers can also afford to be more creative in the content that is designed. So, although you are taking LSE content, we have time and space to have, in addition to the core curriculum, extra activities to build on your skills. So we change from passive learning to active learning. At Forward, we can say that we offer almost bespoke tuition. There's one staff member for every 10 students. The unique program is supported by a third element, an international community experience that is enabling students to experience life in three major cities in Europe. As you've seen, Yenwar year one in Lisbon, year two in Paris, and year three in Berlin. Now the choice of those cities is not innocent. We've placed the cities in that order because in each of the year that you're going to study with us, you will be doing some extracurricular activities. In year one, you will be working on a sustainable and development impact project. And Lisbon is the heart of the start place, uh, the startups, sorry, uh, place in, in uh, Europe. So we have a lot of opportunities in that area. In year two, Paris is one of the most international and favorite uh, student city. And in year three in Berlin, we have connection with a lot of English speaking companies. Year three is also the year where the students will do their internships. So it's very appropriate to be in that city um, with a lot of opportunities. 
100% of our teaching staff comes from the Russell Group, which is also the equivalent of the Ivy League in the US. And they have either studied or taught in those institutions. Some of our current academics actually designed some of the curriculums in LSC or King's College and are now teaching at Forward College. We only have international students with a mix of 24 different nationalities. So if you're not an international student in year one, you will be in year two because we are changing years every country. And finally, the first results are here. We are entering our third year of operation. operation. It's a young university, but I can already tell you that every student from year one passed on to year two, and there's an annual competition from LSC which awards um, a prize to one student amongst all the teaching centers of LSE every year. And this year, it's a student from Forward College who got the prize. All our classes are following the forward method and philosophy. Flipped classroom, personalized tutoring, weekly meal monitoring, group learning, peer assessment. Teachers also take the learning outside of the classrooms. Let me give you a few examples. In our course of politics and international relations, for example, the students will be sent the learning material ahead of the class. Um, they will study those in a working space that we have um, with their peers. And when they are in class, it's time to practice and do exercises. So for politics and international relations, for example, the theme of the day is the rights of vote for women. When you arrive in class, you will be given some roles. One person will be um, an artist, one person will be a feminist, and one person will be a conservative. And you will learn them to debate on those politic themes around uh, impersonations or role playing so that you get to learn the points of views of different people. In the afternoon also, we will take you outside of the classroom. So we might, for instance, take you to the Roman Amphitheater in Lisbon and give you a text to recite that belongs to an other era. And you will be in context, in an amphitheater without technology, putting yourself back to the time where there was no other way to communicate. This is to really make sure that you learn to reflect according to the different times, periods, and environment that you had. Another example for students studying psychology, for example, would be, um, we take uh, our, our head of psychology, Gemma. She would go in the student's residence in the evening and watch some movies uh, related to psychology. And then the students would be, some, would be doing some debriefing about those courses. And then in the classroom the next day, they build up some experiments um, where they are given a task list of things that they have to accomplish on other cohorts of the university so that they get to practice some social experiments. So it's very much of a hands-on experience as you um, start to understand. Um, for all the degrees, um, we also invite a lot of renowned uh, guest speakers to interact with the students, to exchange on ideas, and to really build up on the experiences of different teachers. Because there are small classes, we have more freedom in the curriculum. Um, some students in our politics course, for example, realized that we were not touching enough on the Arabic world. Well, we were able to integrate a new seminar within the next couple of weeks. And this is something that cannot be achieved in a university where we have hundreds of students in a classroom. So let me introduce you a little bit what is special and how this works. So let's see this slide as a menu. There's the main course, which is what we call the academic bachelor. And then we have the sides or the desserts. So you can do either the academic bachelor, which is one of the courses that I've shown to you, one of the six courses, three countries in three years and an internship. But on top of that, you could also do what is called a bachelor plus. So that is exactly the same content as the bachelor, but on top of your academic learning, you will have one year of entrepreneurship project, a digital bootcamp and foreign languages learning, and three modules of personal development. 
Or if you are a student that likes to be challenged and also want or have the capacity to go a bit further, we offer what is called a double bachelor's. So you major with a double bachelor from the University of London and Forward College. And it's exactly the same as the Bachelor Plus, but instead of doing one year of entrepreneurship project, you do three years and you do nine modules of personal developments. You might be wondering what is an entrepreneurship project and what are personal development modules? I'll explain those in the next slides. So what is entrepreneurship and project management? Um, those modules have been created for students to explore what is called non-traditional, but yet very essential of uh, aspect of a, of a human being and future employers leaders. It's fostering your personal development via social, emotional, and leadership skills. You might have heard about soft skills also. Sometimes in a company or at a school, or even in the world, you can have the best idea. It doesn't go down well with people because people don't communicate to each other, because people don't get well, they don't agree, because the teams have not been communicated well enough. And for these, we have created project management opportunities. In year one, our students will work on what is called, for the students taking the bachelor plus or the double bachelor, they will work on what it's called social impact and sustainability projects. They will work with NGOs, local government agencies, or local companies to develop a project that is or could be meaningful to change the society. So it could be reduce uh, plastic waste, uh, promote eco-friendly behavior, uh, work with inclusive HR policies. In year two, the students taking those courses would also work on it's what is called a digital entrepreneurship project, which is um, designing a digital solution for a company. So anyone launching a business uh, would, for example, go via the digitalization of their, of their business, and the students would be helping with that. And in year three, according to what the students would like to do when they finish their undergraduate, they can either do some consulting with the company. So this is because you've already been with us for two years. We are now at the stage where you're maturing up to assess and help a company from the conception to the market study to the launching of one of their products. Or if you are, for example, studying psychology and you say, I really want to do some research afterward, we'll work on a research product. Uh, research method, sorry, where all the academics will work with you to really give you the steps to be successful at research. The personal development modules. So there are nine of them, as you can see here. What do we look into those personal development modules? We look at knowing yourself better, understand stress management, others, your emotion, your strengths, reflect on your mistakes, Relate to others, develop empathy, work together, convince other people, being a leader. In a group, it's really important to understand what you can achieve yourself if you're more a doer, a follower, um, and, and working with the skills of everyone to, as a company, as a group, as a society, go a bit further, but together. Also, we are going to look at efficiency, how to manage your time correctly, how to take decisions, how to deal with challenging conversations. And finally, we're going to work on what is called cognitive approach, which is being creative, opening your mind to other culture, learn about something new. We all know that with the changes of technologies today, with the arrival of ChatGPT, the key difference for students will be the students who are able to adapt because the only certainty that we have is that things are changing and we have to change with them. So it's not only about the academic learning, it's all about also the other skills that will help you to strive in a changing world. The job that you are going to do tomorrow does not exist yet. Now, let's go into um, some pictures about our campuses. So for you to really understand how these whole things work. So the purpose is to study in three cities over three years. 
What does that mean? It means that every year the whole cohort moves from one city to the other. So you start in Lisbon. At the end of year one, the whole cohort moves to Paris. And at the end of year two, the whole cohort moves again to Berlin. The students live together. So you can see a picture of the campus in Lisbon, which is in Bairro Alto. It's right in the city center. Then there's a picture of part of our campus. We don't have the whole building of the city Universitaire, but we have a small tail um, of, of the city International. And then we have the fees in Berlin. So what does that mean? It means that in each of those cities, you will have a learning center where you will go and attend your classes every day. And also residences have been booked for the students to live together. In those residences, there are also some co-working spaces. Let's see. Um, here, here are some pictures of the students' residence in Lisbon. So you can see that all the students have access to their own studios with a garden, communal kitchen, gym, working space, etc. Here is another picture of the campus. That's exactly where I'm located now and where I'm talking to uh, you from. And, and the sky is exactly the same. I'm not going to turn the camera, but we have that blue, blue sky just right now. Some pictures of our facilities. You can see the traditional uh, tiles on the on the wall from Portugal. Some meditation area, uh, really for us, you know, the uh, emotional intelligence also are reflected in our facilities. Student residence. Here too, in Paris, we have the same type of facilities, but a bit bigger. So there'll be a swimming pool, there'll be a media room, and this campus is much, much bigger. So you will have actually sports available on campus and different societies. A lot of our students engage in a lot of extracurricular activities. Some are um, musicians, some are doing fencing, some are doing drama. So there's a bit of, of uh, everything for everyone. Some pictures of the facilities in Paris. And in Paris, the residence is actually on campus. So it's three minutes walk from, uh, from the student residence. In Lisbon, the residence is 15 minutes by metro and 20 minutes by metro from Berlin. So here you can see some pictures of our campus in Berlin. So we have the whole floor of a building that is located in a working co-working space with other companies. Now you see the connection with uh, the third year project consulting and also being at the heart of a city where there's connections with other uh, entities. So this is the campus for year three, uh, the facilities, the learning center for year three and the student residence where students will be living. Oops, I went a bit quick on that one. About our students, so they're very varied and their profiles are very different. Um, we have a majority of European students, but currently we also have students from India, from Brazil, from the US. There is a mix of 24 different nationalities and the students have either taken um, a traditional curriculum, such as the A-levels or an IB program, but some of them also have taken um, a local curriculum. So um, we accept different types of qualifications. Some students um, also have done non-traditional um, education um, systems, and uh, we are keen to hear about those students as well. One thing that you will see in common with those students is that they tend to um, be high achievers in their extracurriculars. They engage in MUN activities. They engage in charities. They engage in social project impacts. They've done, for some of them, a bit of uh, internships. Um, they are passionate about their subjects, but they really push themselves also a little bit outside of the classroom within the bracket of their age and their capacity. Okay, we are not looking for, you know, 12 years experience of work. We are looking for engagement at your level within your age range. Let's have another quick look at a video that I think is really interesting because um, it's a video that was produced by all the people who funded the university. So all those, those 60 people that I mentioned before that work in different companies and sat down around the table 
to really um, redefine what education is about and create this concept of forward. Pay attention to the name of the people and also the companies that they work in. And I'll come back to those afterwards. Forward is really where career building begins. And it's where people grow to become leaders in a new way that's exciting and inspiring. I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. To me, this is the future of education. I think it's, it's a fantastic initiative. The value proposition is absolutely a key to what we look after in, in, in the coming years. Yes. Focus not only on hard skills, but on generic competencies. I like very much. I like your approach of experiential learning and not only formal learning, and even flipped as classroom experience. I think that's perfect. The fact that you are proposing an academic bachelor plus a business leadership bachelor plus two things digital and the intercultural dimension, all that is a very strong point of your college. Well, I think it opens many, many doors. I don't see any organization or practice which would not be a fit with this kind of program. I like uh, and I recognize the need to bring different, more urgent skills development into the education mix. Moi, je crois beaucoup à ça, effectivement. Je trouve que c'est important de mettre une dose euh, d'alternant. C'est important que ce soit très international. C'est important qu'il y ait des notions digitales, de la mise en pratique, trois ans, euh, de l'individu et du groupe. En tout cas, moi, c'est bien dans ces ingrédients-là que je pense que l'avenir se joue. The personal development uh, pillar is essential. You enable young adults to work on this early in their life. What I like is the fact that it's not just a one-off. It's not something that you do one day and then you move to something else. It's something that is ongoing. I'm smiling because I was thinking, actually, um, I would love my kids to go there. <laughs> the strengths of uh, the Forward College uh, program is, is definitely the fact that uh, there is the space given an afternoon uh, to start uh, applying the different skill sets in a community. Doing those loops several times uh, and improving through them is something extremely, extremely valuable. What we know is interesting, something general for us. Right. So, um, forward is really so, where career. As you've seen, um, the idea is that when you when our students live forward, they are well rounded um, to address the need of the world who's waiting for them. Um, as you've seen, the people who speak in that video, they come from very global companies, L'Oreal, um, TomTom, Tom, SAP. So those are are really leaders in their field and uh, they recognize the value of, of studying um, programs that offer a wide spectrums of skills and this is really what we try to do um, at Forward College. Let's have a quick look at our entry requirements. So I know that the majority of the students attending today will be taking A-levels or IB program. Uh, we are looking at triple A's. Uh, the minimum requirement will be ABB. Um, if you're doing the IB diploma, it really depends on the program that you are studying. So um, starting IB scores overall are 35 for psychology. For political and international relations economies, we are looking at 38. But it's really important to also understand that those programs might have subject specific requirements. So if you want to study anything that has the work economics, mathematics should be one of your higher level standard, higher level subjects, sorry. So we will do, dig a little bit more into some of the subject specifics. The scores that we require, 38 and above, are aligned with the, the curriculum um, at, that are taken for LSC and King's College. So it is a challenging program, and uh, and uh, we are looking at at students that are you know good good students, motivated students. It's not as demanding maybe as as the entry requirements for LSE, but we will still look for uh, for students that are strong achievers. But we are, and unlike most of the UK universities, also really really interested in 
your extracurricular engagement activities. So I was mentioning this before, anything that you're doing, civic engagement, cultural interest, community service, MUN, uh, internships, any summer school that you've been doing, this is really important for us. And we will very much consider those aspects when uh, selecting our students. Um, proficiency for students who are based in the UK should not be an issue, but it's, it's here on the side. And most of all, your motivation to join Forward College and understanding why you want to apply to such an institution. The tuition fees um, are here, so it really much depends on your nationality here. Um, if you hold a passport uh, from one of the EU countries, then the fees are uh, the top line, and if not, the second line. And you have the fees here for different types of bachelors that we offer. The bachelor's academic bachelor, the bachelor plus, and the double bachelor. I've also included here the accommodation costs. As I say, you do not have to look for accommodations. We have negotiated the best prices possible for our students to stay in central location with the best facilities, because it can be quite a challenge to find accommodation in Paris or in Berlin, just the same way as it would be in London, as you can imagine. But for us, this is sorted. We have booked as many rooms as we have students capacity. Finally, there's financial aid possibilities. Um, we care about inclusion and uh, we aim at having about 30% of our cohort um, coming from varied background. Um, the way we assess uh, the scholarship or the loan uh, allocation is based on uh, need. So we will ask you or your family to provide um, some uh, material or documents about their revenues, and then the committee will sit down and evaluate what can be done in terms of financial support. The application is quite straightforward. We are not on UCAS or Parcoursup or any of the national um, platforms. Um, you directly apply to us on our website. Uh, um, and the first step that we do is to put you in touch with one of our current students because it's really good for you to actually listen to one of the students who's on the course to understand what their experience is about and to have a free time to ask as many questions as you want. So then when you have taken that conversation, we contact you and say, uh, we'd like to see you. We'd like to talk to you on a personal interview. Set up a 30 minute interview with each of our students to assess their motivation to be on the course and also to understand what they want to study. For some of the students um, who are not taking a uh, higher level in math, for example, or for some students who are taking different curriculums, we will have a math test for some of our degrees to really make sure that you will cope with the content of the course. And finally, there's an admission committee that sits down and decides uh, uh, upon the application. So generally, when students uh, start applying with us, uh, after the interview, they hear back within three weeks. Here you have our details, how to contact me. You can take a screenshot of this slide. Um, there's also the email of our admission officer, one of them, Omar, uh, who is the person that generally you're in touch with when you start applying. I really draw your attention on the little logos that I've placed on this slide because on our YouTube channel, we have a lot of recorded webinars that are subject specific. So I know that some of you now are in year 11. You might be about to choose your um, IB higher level subjects or your A levels. Um, have a look at those webinars. Have a look at the description of the modules and the entry requirements because this might orientate you not only for Forward College but for any university where you would like to apply to choose your modules, your modules, your higher level or your A levels correctly so that they fit with the modules and the course learning. Um, there's also a lot of testimonials from current students, from parents, videos about the campuses. So it's a very rich source of information that we have placed there. Now um, it's time for a thank you for being so patient and listening to all of uh, my explanations, but also time for uh, interaction. So do not hesitate to turn on your camera 
and ask questions about the course should you have some. I'm very happy to answer any questions now. Thank you so much, Christoph. That was absolutely fantastic. So much information um, and really, really helpful. Hopefully that's given everyone a really good sense of what you're doing at Forward College. Um, unfortunately, because this is a webinar, people can't turn their cameras on, but we do have a Q&A. Um, so people are very welcome to pop their questions in there and we'll get to them. Um, so because I also know that some students are preparing for, you know, IB coursework and, you know, some of our A-level students have just finished exams or are about to embark on exams. Uh, some students have given me some questions. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> so, um, one of the most common questions, maths at A-level. If students are not taking A-level maths, does that preclude them from any of the programs or does the math test stay? The math stay? test would supplement. And also when we have a doubt about the math level, we will dig a little bit into the GCSE levels as well to check if some math have been done before. Generally, when it says economics, math is mandatory. Now, there's different ways of preparing math. Um, and if we have a doubt, we might ask the students to take um, one of our math assessment tests. OK, great. And for UK based students with international passports, will because they're studying in English, does that waive the English requirement. Yeah, if the students have been studying in an English speaking country, uh, we are, um, we and, and they provide the transcripts for the last years, we are able to lift that requirement. Okay, fantastic. And then, um, sorry, I'm gonna kind of bombard you. I've got a whole bunch here. <laughs> Deadlines. Students love to know about deadlines. Um, you kind of mentioned that an evaluation after about three weeks would happen. So does yeah. that mean they're rolling admissions? So for students, I'd say, uh, who are non-EU um, and where there is a visa implied to study um, abroad, um, the maximum deadline would be the end of May. That is because we need time to process the visa. And so um, May for? May for September. So this May now for September 2023. Right. Okay. So four to five months before the start of the course. Um, we operate on a wrong basis. It means that when the course is full, we close the admissions. Uh, some courses are very popular, such as psychology and international relations and politics. So, um, and yes, then we take uh, application throughout the year from October all the way to June. Okay, fantastic. So if students already have an EU passport, then they don't need to worry they about don't need, They don't need to uh, worry about the visa aspects. Uh, it's just the capacity that we have on the course. Um, okay. As I said, we cap our classes to 15 students. So. so that's for, so coming to the question we have in the Q&A here. So yeah. 15 students in each year group. In each, in each classroom. Now, if we have a lot of applicants, we might open another class. So, but it's 15 max per class. We have a capacity of 120 students for this intake, for example. This will grow as the year go, but we receive about 2,000 applications and capacity for 120. So you see that uh, it's a small institution. And, and so this is where um, diligence on the applications, following up and being on time comes handy. Having said that, we generally still have space until, as I said, May, then it becomes a bit more complex as students start to accept their offers and confirm their enrollment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my and, and with 2000 applications and 120 accepted, that's quite selective as well. Uh, 20, yeah, 120 places, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, fantastic. Thanks for the uh, information about deadlines and about uh, students in each year group. Um, another question that I, I was kind of wondering, so kind of coming back to, um, you know, studying in three different cities, um, do students, I mean, I'm assuming all of the education, all of the academics will be given in English. 
Correct. The classes are given completely in English, and I'm sorry if I've not mentioned that. Generally, it's one of the first thing I say, yes, but you do not need to speak the language of the countries that you're going to study because all our academics are uh, English speakers and uh, the classes are delivered in English. Um, there are opportunities for students to learn the languages, but it's more to get on with your day to day outside of the classroom. Um, in the student residences, you will be sharing facilities with other international students from the city. Um, so there'll be opportunities to also connect with non forward students uh, and uh, practice your Portuguese, French or German. OK, because I did notice that in the different kind of bachelors, there, wo there was kind of a linguistic component to some of them. We offer the possibility for students to take classes also outside of the main core curriculum, but it's not compulsory and it's really to help them go by with uh, with their day to day. OK, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and so let's see a couple more here, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, Tell me a little bit about the grading system. So because it's a kind of a UK based curriculum, um, are students looking at firsts, two ones, two twos? That's exactly like LSE at King's College. It's the same. Um, I might here just highlight or underline the fact that um, the classification of degree is something that is very proper to the UK system. Um, so outside of the UK, uh, if you say to someone I've got a 2.1 or a first they might not understand mm -hmm. that but it's quite relevant for uh, for UK and maybe master applications so we do yes you, you do graduate with uh, with the University of London diploma degree and uh, and, uh, and 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 then you get the, the classification just as as if you were in the UK Okay, fantastic. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, money. I have a, question, a couple of questions about those yeah. fees. Um, so, I mean, that's just, you know, in terms of fees, that's incredible. You know, I work with a lot of students looking at going to the US and e even Canada sometimes. And I mean, these fees are, you know, um, for UK students would be slightly higher than the nine and something thousand here. But I mean, they, they, they remain, you know, extremely competitive. So, um, are they going to be the same if a student starts on one fee? Will that be the same amount every year? Generally, month, just like the UK, if there's an increase, it remains within the bracket of one or two percent. So uh, there's it's very unlikely unless there's a political massive change, but that that is not you know on the cards at all. Uh, the the fees will remain uh, the same over the three years. Um, um, those are our fees that are established uh, and uh, they are reviewed, uh, uh, but we, we make sure that they don't impact the cohort as they move on. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we have a, another question in the Q&A here. So if you apply, so if a student applies, gets an offer, how long do they have to make up their mind? It's generally, so it depends on the time of the year. Um, it's between three weeks to one month. At the time where decision making becomes a bit more critical, which is now, for example, we will warn the students that if they have not accepted their offer, the place might be given to someone else. So it's not a withdrawal such as, but it's it's uh, if someone else you know takes the spot, then then you you will lose it because we are not holding spots. Uh, for students to make their decision when when times comes to really go forward that's we send a gentle reminder and then and then if there is space available when the students can or are in a capacity to decide then we consider them again deferral is also an option uh, in uh, in some of our in some cases so for example if a student wanted to take a gap year correct okay Great. Um, and coming back to that video where you had kind of, you know, representatives from a bunch of different companies, you know, there are some pretty impressive yes. names there, L'Oreal, Apple, SAP. Um, so, I mean, can I assume that these are maybe some of the companies towards where, you know, some of the graduates are this heading? This is the goal. Um, those, those companies have helped us um, defining the project, putting um the institution together and and you see the last word of of uh, one of uh, the participants was um this is the the pool where they will draw uh their their applicants 
potentially from. Um, the idea is definitely, uh, I'm not saying that, you know, you will get a spot at L'Oreal because there's a lot of work to do behind that. And it really much depends on, on each applicant, their capacity, their engagement, um, and their willingness also to, to strive and, and, and engage. But uh, the idea is that those companies are, are watching closely where our students are going and how they will graduate. And, um, and we are there to make the bridge. Brilliant. All right. Well, I think I've uh, kind of fired enough uh, quick, quick questions at you there. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I feel like I should also say uh, obrigada, uh, danke schön, and merci. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for putting this together, Martin. And thank you for um, the students that joined us today. I'm uh, available to speak to you, to your parents, uh, should you need extra information. Um, I'm drawing your attention on our website, where on the first page, you'll also see some information about upcoming webinars. Those are themed webinars, where you can really hear about the course specifics. Um, there's webinars for the parents as well. There's, uh, there's a lot of activities that you can engage in. You can book a conversation with a student as well, should you wish to do so. So that's, that's the next step, and that's where I'll probably leave you today brilliant thank you so so much thank and uh much. yeah looking forward to seeing everybody soon thanks bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.